Hello everyone, Dan here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be doing a preview for Roxanne Percent's Thor number one. Let's talk about the creative team before we get into this book. This book is written by Al Ewing with art by Greg Land, Jay Liston on inks, colors by Frank Darmada, letters by Joe Sabino. Um, so I'm not exactly up to date on what's going on in the Immortal Thor. Uh, so I don't know what's going on here, but uh, I will definitely always check out a book by Al Ewing, uh, especially on Thor. If this in any way is related to the stuff that's happening on the Immortal Thor book, I'm very excited. So let me give you a quick synopsis of what Marvel has put out, and then we'll talk more about this issue, look at some preview art and all that. So from the pages of the Immortal Thor, the Roxon Age of Comics begins in his secret identity as AI spokes guru Chad Hammer. The son of Odin knows that Mama Gaia is a top priority for heroes and for business. But when a group of insane environmental activists take saving the earth too far, it is time to show them the wisdom of both sides. As Thor, but which god of evil is prompting the kids to rebel? Could it be Loki, the god of evil? What a, what a silly question. Uh, featuring an all-star cast of heroes, like the Minotaur, Executioner, Enchantress, and the Thor truck. Uh, as you can see, this is all very, very wild stuff. Obviously, Minotaur, Executioner, Enchantress, those are not heroes. Uh, but this is the story of Roxen Thor, and it's a vital part of the Absolute Absolution mega event. Uh, I really like that Marvel's going all out with this whole, like, they're really sticking to the gimmick of, like, this is the greatest thing that's ever happened to a Thor book. Uh, it's very, very interesting. Um, so I'm excited to check out what happens here. Uh, I'm a big fan of I'm a big fan of Al Ewing. Um, so it'll be really cool to see what the story takes us. Let's pull up some preview art here. And here we get a little bit of this. Uh, I do think we should check out uh, there's probably going to be some absolute absolution type of thing coming out uh but yeah this is really really interesting we see odin everything looks kind of like a really throwback to thor right uh and then we see this like this corporate thor uh which is a has a very interesting design uh here we see some art by greg land you probably recognize uh, it looks very familiar. If you've, if you've seen Greg Land art before, uh, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and yeah, uh, it's going to be really interesting to see how this uh, relates to the other books. How this, uh, Because there's more than one Roxanne comic book. Uh, so we'll probably talk more about that as they come out. So. Hello everyone, Dan here from the Next Tissue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be doing a preview for Giant Size Hulk number one. This is a new book, part of the Giant Size 50th anniversary celebration. Uh, so let's talk about the creative team in this book. This book is written by Philip Kennedy Johnson, uh, who's currently writing the, uh, the main Hulk book with art by Andrea Bocardo. KJ Diaz on colors and letters by Corey Petit. We also have uh, some covers in the back in the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. Um, very interesting that we get a one nice one shot of the Incredible Hulk. In this issue, the only way to contain the Hulk is a giant size story. Riding the rails is no walk in the park, especially for the Incredible Hulk, as a and particularly when something no someone has been stolen from him by a gruesome new threat with evil machinations in mind. Clear the tracks, the Hulk is coming through. Plus, this also includes a reprinting of Incredible Hulk 372 by Peter David and artist Dale Kwan, featuring high-speed action and heart-trending drama in a Hulk tale for the ages. I'm not familiar with, uh, with that issue of Hulk. Um, I think it's interesting that they, are, they choose a very specific uh, story to reprint. Uh, but yeah, I don't I don't know if it's uh, maybe a first appearance. It looks like just from doing a quick Google search, um, the, cov the cover looks pretty cool. 
but I don't know what it would have this as a I don't know why this would be something that they would want to have back uh, unless this is oh it looks like this is the issue where the Incredible Hulk went back to being green after being Grey Hulk for a while um, so that makes sense that they would want to do that you know that would want to reprint that so let's take a look at some of the preview art uh, actually pretty familiar with Brocardo now that I've been reading some of the alien work. Um, so yeah, it really fits for the story, right? Uh, we see here Bruce riding along the tracks uh, with some young delinquents, looks like, uh, from from the stuff that they have. Uh, so interesting enough, uh, I'm not caught up on the, on the book for the Hulk itself, so I don't know exactly what they may be referencing here, but uh, it's really interesting. I wanted to check out the book. I want to know who this mysterious figure is with Bruce uh, because they have a very interesting look. So I'll definitely need to catch up on my Incredible Hulk reading. Hello, everyone. Daniel here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be doing a review for Fall of the House of X number four. This is a new book from Marvel Comics. We continue on the the fall of uh, you know fall of X events, uh, the mutant and the end of the Krakoan age. Um, let's take a look at the creative team. This book is written by Gary Duggan with art by Lucas Wernick and Jethro Morales, Brian Valencia on colors, letters by Travis Lanham, and we will have a plethora of covers, including this one by Pepe Larraz and Marte Gracia. Uh, you'll see some more at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. Let's get caught up on everything. So this is one of those books that I will say you really can't just jump into this series. You can't just jump into this book. Um, this really is a combination of a lot of the work that's been done. Um, so I would recommend if you want to read these books, check out some of the X-Men stuff that um, Gary Duggan's been doing, at least to get a little bit of context of how it's going, right? Uh, in this issue, My Ally, My Enemy. They say a wounded animal can be the most dangerous kind of animal to face. As the fight between mutants and orcas reaches a deadly pitch, a startling revelation rocks the X-Men to their core. The two series that are coming together in one horrible betrayal as the Krakoan Age nears its conclusion. Yeah, that's... Man, I, I don't know where we're going to go from here. I don't know how this is going to play out. Uh, but I don't like the looks of this at all. But um, I think Gary Duggan is definitely raising the stakes, closing out these issues, uh, giving us some very interesting story as we kind of head into this path. Um, it almost feels as if the world's kind of closing in on everything. And Gary Duggan just with very good pacing is leading that charge along with some really cool looking art. Uh, we have two different storylines. I'm guessing some of the pages that are from one story are drawn by Morales, while the other ones are drawn by Wernick. Uh, I'd have to take a look. Their styles are very similar, so it's very seamless. Uh, but I'm sure I could figure it out if I just took the time and maybe compare some of their other work. Uh, but let's take a look at the preview art so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. You know, I mean, starting with this really cool shot of Apocalypse, the ships, the satellites behind them, the moon, like just everything, just this is how you make a character look and feel very cool. Um, so let's take a look. Uh, also the same panel, we see that Krakoa has been, you know, it's getting smaller. It's, it's not been feeding, uh, and apocalypse is trying to keep Krakoa alive. That's kind of what this whole sequence, this whole story is all about. Uh, we also see that Nimrod is in a lot of different places. Cyclops is trying to get out of there, trying to, you know, being rescued by magic. Uh, as Nimrod kind of blows things up. And here we have Xavier. But what is he doing at or Orcus headquarters? What are his intentions there? Uh, this cannot be good. And if you have any history with uh, Professor Xavier, you'll know that uh, he, sometimes he just makes the weirdest decisions. Um, I'm intrigued, very intrigued. My, this book has definitely piqued my interest as far as like, how are we going to get into the next age of the X-Men? How will we close out the Krakoan age? So, I 
Hello everyone, Daniel here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be doing a review for Avengers Twilight number five. This is a new book from Marvel Comics. Let's take a look at the creative team. This book is written and drawn by Chip Zdarsky and Daniel Acuna, respectively, with letters by Joe Caramagna. Uh, book five, and the truth is rain. Here we are. This is the moment we've been waiting for, the reveal of what really the meaning behind H Day uh, after the big revelation from the last issue, uh, can these Avengers uh, stop? You know, stop what's coming. Uh, in this issue, America and democracy are under attack. Can the Avengers of tomorrow save a country from itself? As their greatest enemy dismantles everything Captain America holds dear, it's a battle decades in the making, and no one is safe. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> look from the last issue, uh, and you'll see it in the preview art. The Red Skull is back, and he's stronger and more conniving than ever. Uh, he has Tony Stark's son, uh, James, helping him out with everything. So it's really, really interesting stuff. Really, con like, very much putting everyone at odds. But Captain America has been assembling a new team all throughout these first five issues. So it's going to be really fun to finally see these. Forces come head to head. Uh, the issue tackles a lot of really interesting stuff. Uh, and also this version of the Red Skull just feels like a lot more sinister than we're used to. So let's talk about some of the art. So I'll pull up some of the preview pages. Daniel Acuna, once again, I love this fusion of like the Red Skull and the a sort of Iron Man type of armor uh, with Ultron designs, right? It's really cool. I think it looks great. Uh, I also love how he shows the distrust that the Red Skull had uh, in the Ultron program that was helping him out uh, when he asked James to make sure that there's no malware or anything. Uh, we get to see the new Avengers or the Avengers of Tomorrow in some outfits that look very reminiscent to what we're used to seeing as Avengers. We have a new Hawkeye. Of course, Thor's back, Miss Marvel, Captain America, and Iron Man finally has able to join the fray. So really cool stuff. Uh, and then here we see the attack on Washington, D.C. Uh, I won't go too much into details here. Uh, there's definitely something very interesting about this sequence. Uh, and you'll just have to read this issue to find out what's going on. But highly, highly recommend it. I think Chip Zdarsky and Daniel Acuna are doing an excellent job in telling a really fun, really uh, different story from what anything I've read before. Uh, and just, you know, this possible future of the Avengers. Uh, we have one more issue left, and after the reveal from this issue, I think things are going to escalate to the next level. So if you have read this, let me know what you thought about it down in the comments, as always. Thank you for watching, everyone. Remember to share, like, subscribe, hit the bell so you know when we go live. That is most Saturdays, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Stay tuned. We have more comic reviews, trailer reactions, TV recaps, all that fun stuff here in the channel. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye.